potentials of um, ourselves in the area of design and development of uh, new products and uh, technologies for uh, the benefit of the members of uh, IPI. Over the next 30 minutes, we will go through the plastic product design and development, emerging technologies that I think that members would find useful, specifically with regard to new product development, and especially in the challenging scenario as we look at it today. Most of the people are suppliers in India and people develop plastic products and provide it to their customers who are OEMs. Nevertheless, the future belongs to the people who develop their own products in addition to being suppliers. The emphasis on this presentation is primarily towards developing products and technologies in this country. I had visited Taiwan around seven years ago for a conference and I was looking at one of their presentations where they were trying to change themselves from being a supplier of mold tools and dyes and plastic components to being a design to manufacture to supply houses. They were showcasing a wooden device that was developed 200 years earlier. This country and its civilization are much older in terms of millennia. And for us to talk about design and development of products or technologies or things like that for over two millennia is rich and diverse. But to come back to this question as to whether we need to emphasize on the design and development of products in this country, absolutely yes. We take the fate or the challenges into our own hands and the growth and profitability are left to us. The presentation is going to have a few slides on the agenda. The business objective is as to why we need to go through this, the design paradigm, the drivers of innovation, process-driven product development, why digital transformation is essential, not only for survival, but also to conquer. And then we will summarize with what we have learned from today's presentation. It is important that we need to look at business objectives when we are looking at design. Why? Because businesses need not only survive, they have to conquer. For that, cost reduction is inherent. There's a difference between cost and price. What your customer pays to you for your product is their price. What they end up enduring is the cost. Similarly, it happens with you as well. So it is the cost which we need to reduce. The time to market or the time to product development has to be reduced while keeping the quality and reliability under focus. People don't want to have cheap products. People don't want to have not long lasting products. So in other words, if we take any developmental activities with regard to product design and development into perspective with these four attributes, we are bound to succeed in addition to the go-to-market strategies. Now, when it comes to deterministic goals in any organization, we have an input, a process, and an output. So if we want our companies to grow and be more profitable, especially in today's challenging times, as IPI has transformed itself to going online, similarly, the input has to be changed the process have to go through a transformation for you to get a measurable output, which is going to be different without changing the input or the process or both. How can we expect a different output? This is exactly what we need to drive upon as a process in our organization, especially with regard to the product design and development. Now, when you look at the design paradigm, over 85% of the product cost is determined by design whether we like it or not. It is the other 15% which gets into the operational activities such as inventory control, supplier cost control, and things like that. While 85% is held by design. In other words, if we are in a position to come up with goals for the design department to contain the costs of the product, they hold the key to success. The product development time can be reduced only by concurrent engineering processes. In other words, the supplier, the OEM or the customer or the voice of the customer, if we are going to be developing the products, in addition to our own people have to be put together as a team 
and the cross functional team has to meet the goals and objectives in terms of the four items that i have talked about earlier slide the drawings dictate the product quality the fate of the product is determined by design gdnt is the mainstay for development of those drawings we have been in a society where somebody gave us the print we developed it to the print not long anymore why because we cannot be suppliers alone we need to be product development experts so that the value chain has to be improved upon and the last but not the least the reliability of the product which is ca driven for getting a deterministic model of the reliability of the product life based design is important and not factor of safety design this we keep telling it in the colleges all the time where factor of safety alone is taught however things are changing so when the design engineer looks at any product specifically in the area of plastics we need to look at how the costs can be controlled in terms of material in terms of the processes put together in terms of using inserts for example in terms of the stiffness of the product in terms of the durability of the product in terms of its reliability all these have to be reflected on the gdnt drawings that we propose to get it manufactured now everything revolves around the tolerances that are provided in design as you can see there are too many inserts in this part with stiffness coming into place so in plastic product design it is important for us to understand that the things which influence the tolerances are listed on the left non uniform shrink rates affects reliability warpage and distortion affects reliability as well as quality objectives thicker walls affect repeatability again it's a quality effect tooling tolerances that we use to achieve the part specification tolerance unnecessarily have build up affecting the finished part tolerances and consistency takes a back seat this primarily comes as a result of not paying attention to what tooling tolerances are required to achieve the build tolerances and at the part level if we are unable to achieve it how about the assembly inserts introduce another variable element this affects both the quality and the reliability if you look at the switches that have been developed and deployed at households how many times we change the switches how many times we change the bezels in the switches why because the plastic degrades not much load is coming on those bezels but then why are they breaking primarily because of the initial torque that was given when it was assembled so these are different small things that go up for the customer experience at the end of the day the longevity of the product depends on the customer's experience the material inconsistency in terms of using virgin material versus recycled material and also in terms of dimensional stability affect the reliability and the quality has has been in the slide so we need to pay attention to this as much as possible to contain the variation in an assembly oriented design i will give you a simple example in 1986 ford developed a vehicle called the taurus it was a jelly bean car the first of its kind the the rounded shaped car that came to existence and in 86 and a half it was released into the marketplace subsequently general motors developed a white paper wherein they said the number of components going into the front end of the car in a conventional car was around like a buick from general motors was around 104 components while the ford taurus had 14 components on its front end the reliability of the front end of the car because of the unified design was enhanced considerably and a lot of quality and defective assembly issues that would come forth as a result of so many components going into the assembly were done away with because of a simplified design the part was complex to manufacture but the assembly was simplified in other words the plastic components when you are changing sheet sheet metal components to plastic components it is not the replacement of the sheet metal component with the plastic component that is of importance it is the it is the replacement of the sheet metal assembly or the assembly of so many components coming together integrated into a single part in a plastic component initial tooling cost could be high 
but the overall reliability and the product cost would go down exponentially, primarily because of the assembly oriented practices that plastic components or plastics technology empowers designers to use. If you look at the right side graph, you would see that if the individual parts have reliability at 0.99, what does the overall system reliability for a system in series would come up with? And look at how it degrades as the reliability of the individual component comes down to 0.95, while the overall system reliability comes to 0.6. Therein lies the essence of the customer experience with regard to the products that we develop and supply in the marketplace. Simplified assemblies are more important than simplified part design. Repeatability in manufacturing, repeatability in assembly is the key to success, both in terms of quality as well as in terms of reliability. Snap fits, self-locking, fastening need to ensure path consistency in orientation and location. I repeat, in orientation and location. That consistency, when given or empowered at the design stage, ensures consistency in reliability and quality subsequently down the line when the customer puts the component or the system to use in the field. So the slots or the un unless slots which are used instead of holes, it should be avoided since they are detrimental to the determinant assemblies. In other words, if you use slots in a part, the assembly, the parts, components, orientation and location in the assembly is not deterministic as a result of which multiple assemblies will have so much of variation resulting in issues subsequently down the line during the service life of the product. One of the questions that people say is, I am not having a, having a slot helps me to go through the assembly without issues. Why are you asking us to prevent it? You may solve a problem of an assembly issue in not by addressing the root cause of the problem. However, the problem still persists and becomes has a snowball effect subsequently down the line because as the third point was said, the orientation of the location of the path in assembly deterministically provides for the reliability of the assembly. Reliability of the assembly is more important than the reliability of the part or the component. So the drivers of innovation is what we need to look at. The designers have the ability to innovate. The designers have the ability to transform an innovation into a product. You see on the right side, a figure given there. If you are able to see an eye there, that is conventional wisdom. If you're able to see a person kneeling down and looking at you, that's probably an innovative way of looking at the same font. Why am I saying this? The innovation is the key to driving things. We are innovating so much in manufacturing. We forget to innovate in the design side. And the innovation at the design side is not privy for the engineers. In fact, more engineers, more engineering education, less innovation. This is what we have seen conveniently in the marketplace. So innovation is something which the organization has to deliver in terms of people who are working in the organization in terms of products and technologies. The product transitioning from a supplier to a product manufacturer where you have unique products and technologies. I'll give you a simple example. You have the sanitizer which is required for today. If you are able to develop a canister, which can be carried in the pocket, which can be used sporadically every now and then by the user, it's a packet health device, and then you keep using it all over the place and you come up with a refill for that, and the refill costs nothing. Imagine the ecosystem of supplying it in your own area, forget the rest of India. Some people are doing it, it's not enough. So a lot of different things, some people have innovated the innovative things, the, uh, innovated uh, in the mask productions or in the mask uh, subsurface interface, uh, uh, bacterial, antibacterial um, uh, coatings that are being provided on the masks. Nevertheless, innovation comes from every product or technology that we come up with. Emphasis should always be on reusable designs. What do I mean by reusable designs? Enough design has been done. It just we need to look at those designs and adapt those designs without much of a modification into innovative products and technologies. While driving this, I would like to emphasize upon three things. One is what is called as 
derivative design. You take a design, you scale it either larger or smaller and you produce a new design. That's called as derivative design. The second one is called as evolutionary design, where you take a design, you come up with a completely different design as compared to the first design. That's called as the design evolves. The parent is still the same. However, the new design is completely different. Third one is innovative design. People who develop de uh, derivative products may perish. People who bring in um, your evolutionary products, they may exist. But people who develop innovative products will in invade. This is what Taiwan wants to do and South Korea wants to do. They don't want to be identified as manufacturing bases alone. They want to be a complete fit form and function ecosystem wherein everything comes together and people come together, utilize the strengths of the society to develop the country much better than as individuals. So in other words, when we come up with reusable designs and deterministic products, which already sit over there, the innovation lies in the product. The designs could be derivatives from or evolutionary from existing periods, existing uh, products, as a result of which the reliability is better known. And the third one is copy proof, in addition to serviceability. These are the innovative things which people need to come up with. On the process side, emphasis is on quality above cost. Much has been beaten about cost. A customer does not want a cheap product. What is the example for a cheap product that was portrayed in the marketplace? The car, which was a sub one lakh car. It did not thrive beyond a certain point because the product was looked upon as cheap. People don't want to be associated with cheap products. People want to be associated with quality products, affordable products. Affordable is the name of the game. Eliminating human errors, innovating over there, dynamic alignment to the market scenarios. This is where digital transformation comes in the picture and converting waste into reuse. Reusable designs, reusable products, again brought in, recycled, not at the product, not at the part level itself, but at the product level itself and using it into new products and technologies. Proactive instead of being reactive. These are the drivers of innovation in any product and technologies. Why am I talking about this, especially with regard to plastics? Plastics give the natural way of filling the space in an arbitrary manner to develop new shapes and technologies. This can be leveraged upon quite a bit. The drivers of innovation have to be under the four leaderships, namely cost, service, operations, and technology. Impregnating technology into the product is the name of the game, is the need of the R. So just lower price alone is not going to cut. Narrow product portfolio is not going to cut. High volume, yes, but the narrow product portfolio also can be an Achilles heel for us. The services portfolio, the service levels, and the quality of service. How often do we see, take the example of the water um, purifier. The components going into the plastic, into the water purifier is a plastic driven. So how many of us go and look at the cartridges and take them as bought out from somebody and integrate it into plastic units and start selling those better than the organized sector. Why has this not happened? Primarily because of the value chain, because of the supply chain management that we need to do subsequently down the line. That's where service leadership comes into picture. With WhatsApp, with mobility, mobile devices in the hand, it's very easy to get this done, even at the local level. So the last one is collaboration, design for the supply chain and best and efficient processes in terms of the operational leadership. When we, conf when we bring all these together as a confluence of different aspects that come into de develop in the development of a product, we are bound to succeed. So in terms of a process, as we have been advocating over the last few years in our company for our customers, the design for quality and reliability objectives have to be known first. They need to be configured as assembly objectives and performance objectives. The design failure mode and effect analysis drives the prioritization of the assembly and the performance objectives in terms of the risk priority number. 
from the assembly objectives you get the design for assembly from there in you get your datum reference frames and design for assembly in terms of reliable assemblies where fewer components come together and then the datum reference frames and then the gdnt drawings and then the tolerance analysis the tolerance optimization in terms of the objective function of the def of the uh, dfq and our objective while keeping the cost of poor quality and the cost of precision and perspective as the constraints in addition to the design for manufacture in terms of the process capability and then coming up with the key characteristics which go on to the drawing as inspection dimensions driven by your risk priority number while keeping into consideration the design for life the design for performance transportation service and as ma'am said sustainability and in the previous presentation as ma'am said in sustainability and driving home the serviceability of the components coming in together so this process when institutionalized in any organization is bound to succeed one of the questions that people ask is i don't have much experience in developing designs of products i don't have the database this process it helps you to achieve this one of the pitfalls of not following this process for example is copying somebody else's product design from the finished product we do not know the failure modes we do not know the assembly issues we do not know the life influencing factors would i rather develop a product design where i am in control of these three things or not knowing this getting into a design of a product from some other component and ending up with issues subsequently down the line this is exactly what this process drives upon so in terms of emerging technologies these need to be put together in terms of digital processes so that people can use these at their levels empowered in the digital transformation so that you can develop successful products and technologies for example you start with an inquiry you take the voice of the customer you put together in terms of the requirements management and then in terms of the project management and then come up with the cost drivers in terms of the resources the raw materials the products the supply chain base so on and so forth and then look at the issues and look at the cost of poor quality versus what is really driving up the costs and getting up a heads up at the beginning itself so in other words even even during these troubled times we need to ensure that we are digitally transformed in the organization we may be using an erp system but that's a transactional system while we are engineers we are developing products and technologies we needs to get a heads up in terms of what are the issues which are driving the costs how those issues should not be repetitive coming again and again and bleeding the organization so as i said 85% and over are determined by the by the, the fate of that is determined at the cost level by the design all these heads up information has to be put to reusable form in terms of digital transformation in an organization not only to stay competitive but also to conquer markets we need to remember that we are our markets are global are not india alone in other words under the make in india initiative a lot of things are being done and innovation is being given the thrust unless we digitally transform ourselves using empowered technologies new product development takes a lot more time as i said earlier cost time quality and reliability are important all the four components as dashboards on the screen in front of you day in and day out so that the corporate goals to achieve these are known to the stakeholders in the organization at the individual level based on their rights and responsibilities in summary this opportunity this opportunity in terms of the problems that we are facing today can be converted into opportunities for healthy growth and profitability by introducing innovative products and technologies in terms of digitally transformed processes quality and reliability are the mainstay for product designs to succeed customers do not want i repeat the cheap products they want cost effective products transitioning from a supplier mindset to product owners is the need of the hour for example i have one of the uh, plastic suppliers manufacturers to the automotive industry said my capacity i have two shifts natrogen but i am using only 50% of one shift the other 50% is not utilized you have your processes in organization come up with your own product take the second shift and half of the first shift and start 
developing products where you need, you can sell those products by establishing a channel, uh, by establishing a, a supply chain yourself. Yes, in, it, in, but it is de-risking. Why? Because it's not being used anyway. And you have to pay the um, infrastructure, pay the resources anyway. So in other words, instead of looking at it as a problem, if we look at it as an opportunity, the world is ours. So there is one customer who transformed himself from a water dispensing unit to a sanitizer dispensing unit. We all know that. That is beautiful innovation. So similarly, a lot of things can be done provided we have the strength to do it and the knowledge to do it in terms of digitally transformed processes, even in the changed market scenario. We need to remember the old order changer, yielding place to know. This is Tennyson's words in one of the um, uh, proverbial expressions that he had used in the past. Whether we do it or not, somebody is going to do it. Some nation is already doing it. Are we ready for it? Are we able to do it? That is the question that we need to ask ourselves. So this, pressure, this presentation summarizes our ability to take forward any kind of designs that come in and taking those innovations to the next level. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sinatrajan, sir. Uh, thanks for the good presentation and the good voice of the local. And you made a good example of the sanitation for the uh, vocal of the local uh, productions. And I like to quote uh, Ratan Tata's one more word that uh, when the Tata Nano has been a uh, little bit uh, move away from the West Bengal to uh, Pune back. And uh, he said in the one meeting that uh, he should name the Tata Nano as the uh, low cost uh, vehicle than the cheap vehicle, which makes the difference between cheap yes. and the low cost. Okay, yes. that is how the India has been then. And uh, the good way of the presentation of the digital technology, cost effective, innovative, digital transformer, and also the Dr. Savita about the theory will teach, experiment will not forget. Thank you so much for the good uh, webinars. And uh, I like to take the question answer now.